So, hey, no, it's okay. Yeah, ten minutes. Uh, yeah, ten o'clock. Thank you for reminding. Uh, uh, who else is missing here? I think Siddharth. I hope he doesn't come at eleven o'clock. <laughs> Just if one of you can message him, please do that. Siddharth, who else? Kannan also. Kannan also was there in the previous session. So uh, please do let them know. Sorry for the confusion that I caused. Okay, so let's continue. Uh, we are having a very um, intense sort of a situation here where Jesus is uh, boldly claiming to be the Messiah, while the leaders are keen to oppose that. So now he's going ahead and you know, uh, encouraging these people to believe in him because it's only if they believe in him that they can overcome the consequences of sin. So Jesus, you know, tells them again uh, when they say, "Who are you?" and they question him, you know, he again, you know, makes that claim. Uh, he tells them, "I'm from heaven. I belong to the Father," uh, and, and all of that. And then he continues. He says, "Look, those who believe, right?" So those who believe in John 8, 32, he says, um, some of the Jews believed when Jesus spoke. So to them, he's saying that if you abide in me, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. So uh, do you see this kind of um, a statement anywhere else? Any other passage in the Bible, which is common, if you abide in my word, Anyone can recall any common passage? Ah, good, good, Kiran. So John chapter 15, okay, we will come to that. Uh, that's also a very, very famous passage. But here, you know, we, we see one um, like a uh, glimpse of, of what Jesus is trying to say. So he is basically telling the people that if they believe in the word, okay, and they give attention to the word of God, then uh, they will continue to be the disciples. So how can we continue to be the disciples of Jesus today? We have to pay attention to the word, attention to the word, listen, follow, obey, um, you know, all that. Then he says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. So he's saying that the word is so important and the word is the truth. Okay. So when we base our life on the truth of God's word, he's also telling us that we can walk in the liberty of God. We can walk in the um, uh, liberty, that freedom God gives to live our lives. Uh, that is one thing, but freedom to relate with God. No freedom to enjoy God. That is also something that comes from the truth of his word. So to those who believed, you know, he is pointing them to the word and saying, you know, you be encouraged. You follow the word. That way you will be my disciples. So uh, some of the people, they answer back and they say, we are Abraham's descendants and have never been in bondage to anyone. How can you say you will be made free? So uh, the reason why you know this statement is coming up is because he's talking to the Jews. Jews are Abraham's descendants, okay? And they went through captivity. We know that they were in um, Egypt for some time, but now they're out. So they didn't understand. See, again, Jesus is saying something, but understanding is the issue. They did not fully understand what he was trying to get to them. So Jesus, using this opportunity, you know, he says that, look, it's not about freedom from uh, any human master. So he clarifies and he says that, assuredly I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave to sin. So he's talking about a worse master, that is sin. Okay, What does sin do to us? Sin holds us captive. Sin can control our lives. Jesus understood that. Sometimes we look at sin and we only feel that there will be some uh, 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 consequences or results where we will have to deal. Oh, okay, if I lie, then this will happen. Uh, it's it doesn't please God and also the results of sin uh, we don't want in our lives. But at the same time, Jesus is 
revealing to them and he's telling that it's not just about cause and effect it's about getting entangled because sin is like a slave master you go into the trap and then you know the door is shut and sin will keep controlling you it will keep driving you uh, and uh, you know um, making you move in that wrong path so that is the bondage which he's talking about so he's saying if you don't want to be caught in that bondage of sin then depend on the word of god go by the truth of god's word so that's what he says i assuredly i say to you whoever commits sin is a slave to sin so in that context i'm telling you you will be liberated you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free from the slave uh, uh, from the uh, sin from sin which is like a master then you know he says that the slave does not abide in the house forever but a son abides forever therefore if the son makes you free you shall be free indeed so if that slave master is powerful and he can control the lives of those who are uh, uh, sinning then he is reminding the the believers and he's telling them that look the son of god is greater than that slave master so if he can put you under bondage that master of sin uh, the son of god can set you free in a greater way so don't worry give yourself to the truth of god's word you will remain uh, in the truth you will be free even if you are in bondage if the son makes you free you shall be free indeed so he's proclaiming freedom for god's people freedom from sin then now he's touching another point just now they said oh what freedom are you talking about i uh, so freedom was the issue that he addressed now he's going to refer to the point which they made about we are abraham's descendants so he's telling them you're talking about abraham okay but you still seek to kill me and you don't understand my word but he is going on to uh, clarify to them something about his you know uh, how he relates to abraham so then when he is talking about these matters he brings up this issue about them being abraham's descendants they quickly answer him they say abraham is our father as if jesus doesn't know so jesus tells them look if you are abraham's children then you would do the works of abraham so what is abraham what do we uh, call abraham what is the work of abraham as per hebrews 11 what can we say about abraham or um, also i think romans 4 what can we say about abraham okay kiran says faith okay kiran says faith that's right so till now jesus is encouraging people to believe in him again he says if you claim you are abraham's descendants then you should do what abraham did what did abraham do he believed okay he believed god so you do the works of abraham but look at this you are not listening to the truth which uh, i'm telling you you are uh, seeking to kill me okay these are the kind of uh, deeds which you are doing and you're saying abraham is your father father abraham is about faith so if you are truly a descendant you should be a child of faith but there's no faith in you so he says you do the deeds of your father so jesus is kind of rebuking them he's saying your true father even though in the natural it is abraham let's see which father he's talking about it will come little later so he's uh, he's rebuking them then uh, you know we move on they respond to him and they say why are you questioning our father because earlier they question him and said who is your father now they are getting offended they like how can you question about our father we are not born of fornication we have one father god so they also respond like jesus you are claiming god is your father father so they are also saying yeah god is only our father now jesus says if god were your father you would love me because 
you know the father would have revealed it to you that i am the son because i proceeded forth and came from god okay i have not come of myself but you don't understand my speech you know why because you are putting your faith he already said right your father you are believing your father you do the deeds of your father so now in a more direct way he is rebuking them and he is saying was 44 he says you are of your father the devil so he must have really offended them because he uh, he is not interested in them claiming these big things abraham is our father and all because there's no faith if you are child of abraham you should have faith you are the child of the devil he says so your father is the devil and the desires of your father you want to do he was a murderer from the beginning you know when we study about believers authority and we describe the the works of satan and who is satan you know there are some nice description uh, uh, points here he is the devil he is the murderer remember jesus you know later he will uh, share in the book of john itself he comes to steal kill and destroy he is very interested in causing us trouble that is his primary uh, um, focus so he is a murderer he does not stand in the truth okay because there is no truth in him so can we say he is a liar yeah so all these are descriptions of the devil so he is a deceiver speaking lies he is a murderer he is the devil then uh when he speaks the lie okay he speaks of his himself so there is no basis to what he is saying he is not basing it on the word of god but jesus is speaking on the basis of the word of god but still he is so uh, sad that the people are not believing the truth that he is speaking but they are saying that jesus is the one who is um, against god the father so he says that if you are truly from god then you would believe me now let's move forward you know jesus is uh, making these claims it's it sounds like one you know in a court when you go there is a, a case right and then the the person who is a, accused they have to prove that you know they are not accused and who they really are so it almost sounds like that the jews are accusing jesus and jesus is presenting his case he is making his claims about his identity so let's go on what does jesus reveal you know more and more about himself so the jews are upset by the answers that they are getting uh so now their their accusation becomes very weird so they say uh, do we not say rightly that you are a samaritan and you have a demon so they their uh, words are not even logical anymore okay they just want to catch him with something now we don't know why they're calling him a samaritan but maybe they are calling him a demon because they they got offended he is telling that satan is their father so they are telling okay you will tell us that satan is our father you have a demon <laughs> you know so it's becoming like a tit for tat kind of a situation so now Jesus answers them he says i don't have a demon but i honor my father okay and you are dishonoring me so jesus is speaking the truth and that is a uh, hard hitting for the uh, jews so he say basically you are dishonoring me you are dishonoring the father and i don't seek my own glory but uh, i am seeking the glory of the father okay and uh, uh, if you keep my word then again he it's like the heart of a savior right so uh, he is rebuking them yes but he's again and again telling them look if you don't believe you will die and then here in verse 51 he says most assuredly i say to you if anyone keeps my word he shall never see death so he's trying to convince them and bring them back to the fact that okay all this discussion arguments you put it aside you need to be saved i am the messiah i have come to save you so then the jews you know they again get back to him and they say now that you say uh, now that we know that you have a demon um you know abraham is dead and the prophets and you say if anyone keeps my word he shall never taste death so they are trying to twist and turn his words he just said he does not have a demon 
and they are saying now we know that you have a demon okay and uh, abraham is dead all the prophets are dead but your how how is it that you are telling that if we believe in your words we will never die so they are kind of going to that place to prove him wrong and they found a point actually they are telling that so jesus you are trying to say you are greater than abraham okay uh, who do you think you are so again question who are you how dare you you know that kind of a question they are putting forth to jesus so again jesus you know continuing with the same claims he says look if i honor myself my honor is nothing it is my father who honors me of whom you say that he is your god so he is saying look i am not saying anything different just because i brought up abraham you know don't think that i am i am trying to lie to you but he saying only based on what the father uh, is is saying you know i am i am speaking and this father is none other than your very god okay yet even though i am trying to honor him yet you are, you have not known him but i know him if i say you know i do not know him i shall be a liar so basically jesus is saying i am speaking the truth to you okay you better believe me but i do know him and i keep his word your father abraham rejoiced to see my day and he saw it and was glad okay so now again you know when you listen to the statement in verse 56 it sounds bizarre because you know what jesus is saying he is saying that i am not created he saying your father abraham rejoiced to see my day so abraham was also in a way waiting for the revelation of the messiah okay as did every other uh, child of god every other great man and woman of god that we read about so he is telling look even abraham he knew that i am going to come one day he saw it and he was glad so how did he see it he must have seen it by faith that one day the messiah will come and he rejoiced in his lifetime he has already rejoiced about me whom you are rejecting your father abraham has uh, rejoiced so now the jews are getting really really um, uh, you know very um, i already said weird with the comments you have a demon okay and you don't follow uh, uh, our, like god is our father you don't follow the father so all these accusations you are a samaritan now they are telling him how can you say you know that uh, you have seen abraham he didn't say he has seen abraham he said abraham has seen my day but the tear twisting it how can you say that you have seen abraham uh, so they are telling jesus your talking like you are very wise okay and they uh, kind of put this out and they say you are not yet 50 years old you know how in our uh, um, uh, part of the world they say things like uh, you're not even you know uh, 18 years old you've not yet left school college you know uh, how can you how can you uh, talk about money or how can you what knowledge do you have what experience do you have so basically it's like that it's like saying what experience uh, what authorizes you to talk about uh, abraham and god and all these big big things you're not even 50 years old so apparently in the jewish culture uh, 50 was the time when these uh, uh, you know these these learned men would retire so it's like they have seen it all in the experience they have studied they have taught they have uh, uh, applied uh, the word of god and they have seen it all basically they are full of experience that's what 50 years is referring to but the jews are telling jesus you're talking like you have experienced it all you're not even 50 years old okay jesus is some 30 years old here so uh, how is it that you know abraham you have seen abraham now till now everything that jesus said was hard to digest for the jews okay he he's saying even abraham has rejoiced about me so it's like they cannot digest this at all 
now comes like the cherry on the uh, uh, on the cake okay or the the last stone that that will tip the scale so it's like you know the last boulder they're getting uh, shot by this last statement that jesus is going to make now so after everything that jesus said jesus says most assuredly i say to you before abraham was i am what sense does it make doesn't make any sense you know before abraham was okay let's try to uh, uh, you know logically look at what jesus is saying sorry yeah uh, logically look at what he's saying he's saying before abraham was so that is the duration when abraham lived the past so abraham lived in the past he say before abraham lived i am he should have said i was what grammar is this he saying before abraham i existed but what is the way in which jesus is telling this so he says before abraham was i am now for a jew you remember moses at the burning bush when he goes and he asks um uh, god who is speaking through the burning bush and uh, tells okay i'll go i'll go to pharaoh i will rescue the people i will lead the people but what shall i say uh, who has sent me because they will ask who has sent me god says from the burning bush you know i am that i am so the title i am was very clearly used for jehovah god okay and the jews knew that very well so jesus is like okay i tried to tell you like this like that in so many ways you're not getting it last uh, you know like, like this is it before abraham was he uses that phrase which is in their face to tell them i am god i am messiah so he tells them before abraham was i am so when they heard that for them it was like we cannot we are so angry with you we can't have this conversation anymore how can you say being a man how can you say that you are god and you're saying i am meaning are you that god who spoke from the burning bush are you the god who led the uh, israelites out of egypt and took care of the israelites for 40 years are you are you sure you are that person being a human being how can you say that so they were very angry with jesus for this you know main and direct claim that he is making and he saying i am self existent you know meaning not created i was not created i've always existed even abraham i was there so he is clearly telling them i am the messiah i am god so verse 59 what is their response hardness of heart not able to receive the truth now they stop their questioning they take up stones to throw at him why because it's blasphemy you know you are equating yourself with god you should die that is the conclusion they have come to they have taken up the stones to throw at him but jesus hid himself and went out of the temple going through the midst of them and so passed by so he escaped basically okay uh, but is he uh, is he trying to hide who he is no at this point you know jesus is quite bold he is telling people things as it is so we saw even after chapter 7 we saw how people were opposing him questioning him um, um wanting to know his identity but he continued his ministry he came to the temple and over there he went ahead and taught people now after this next session of accusing and condemning and all that uh, he is still continuing his work he just escaped and then we'll see what jesus is doing so we move on to chapter 9 here it says now as jesus passed by as if nothing has happened you know passed by meaning he has planned his work he's going ahead and doing his work he's not stopping what he needs to do so he is just passing by then at that time you know he sees a man who was 
blind by birth so in again you know in their culture it was a very uh, um like you know something to do with the curse or um uh, something like that you know which causes people to be blind so when they would see blind people they would assume uh, certain things about them and just judge so he sees this one blind person who is blind by birth so immediately the disciples ask him this question they say uh, rabbi who sinned this man or his parents that he was born blind okay so when we look at this scenario you know it sometimes it reminds us of us because we may see people in difficulty in trouble instead of thinking that they need help okay they need to be set free the normal human response is we want to figure out why is he in this situation did he manage his finances properly you know why are they going through this uh, argument oh, okay uh, are they you know uh, uh, do they have the right attitude you know did they lie did they do this did they do that or if we cannot come up with a conclusion about what was done by the individual then sometimes we go back to blame uh is it uh, the sin which his parents have committed or is some you know all all these questions come up so the attitude is not to solve the problem the attitude is to simply wake up you know old stories and uh, try to come to a logical sometimes even theological conclusion you know sometimes as believers now leave the people of the world sometimes as believers also we start going into this kind of uh, mode where we say uh, okay uh, there is the sickness why what who there's nothing wrong as long as we are looking for a reason now if i find out okay why is this happening then i can pray against that or i can cast out if it is a um, <laughs> demon i can cast it out but my mindset should be for the solution not simply you know like a theological thing there's no end to it you just keep asking okay um why okay the scripture says like that that scripture says like this so it's it, it's not um for a productive reason you know when we ask such questions so if we ask some questions like this it should be for the sake of finding a solution but here you know the disciples they are like the people of that times when you see a blind person born born blind they want to know uh, why is this man cursed what exactly happened so they are going into that mode look at jesus is priority <clears throat> so jesus he quickly shifts the focus okay so for the disciples it's a matter of theology okay come jesus let's have one hour discussion what is the reason who is responsible jesus says look neither this man nor his parents sinned but shift focus to what that the works of god should be revealed in him okay i must work the works of him who sent me while it is day the night is coming when no one can work as long as i am in the world i am the light of the world so jesus is very solution minded he says okay whatever be the reason for this man to be blind is that more important than giving him sight let us focus on giving him the sight then if he receives the sight what will happen you know god's glory will be revealed how is god's glory revealed we saw all the miracles the signs the healings the deliverances that jesus did he was revealing the glory okay of the father so he wanted to continue to reveal and reflect you know who god is how good god is and that was his priority so he says but in this case you know he did have an answer so he gave the answer also he said uh, the it's not what you're thinking it's not this man or his uh, uh, parents so then people ask the question you know sin leads to uh, sickness isn't it uh, so how is it that some people are sick uh and uh, 
you know it, it's not the parents who have sinned and all so what is your answer if they if the parents didn't sin or the person didn't sin then what is the reason how can somebody be born sick or somebody be born you know sometimes a special child you know you're born with some uh, syndromes and all obviously it's not the child because the child was born like that uh, maybe even the parents didn't sin so how did they how did the child become like that who sinned i i mean i just want to know your thoughts okay arun says adam sin what about uh, any other thoughts here demonic works okay okay fine generational sin okay you mean grandparents and their uh, their from there it could come maybe yeah that could be a reason what else See, in this case, Jesus says, "Neither this man nor his parents sinned." You know, one of the things which we can, uh, 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 like, settle our minds uh, upon is, you know, in this world, as Aaron said, Adam sinned. The world is as it is corrupted by sin. Okay, so even when we have walked righteous. Uh, or the parents have been righteous people sometimes you know we don't actually we don't know all the details but uh, we could you know see that to the best of their abilities you've seen the parents are living righteously grandparents have lived righteously and uh, they have dealt and prayed about every generational sin and uh, they have uh, you know overcome those things and all but still something like this happens in the family so this world is corrupted by sin so even when let's say the people don't sin such things can happen just by virtue of the fact that you know we are here in the world and uh, the world is corrupted by sin okay so uh, some sickness could happen some challenge could happen right uh, and uh, every time we should not look to blame who is responsible for uh, this result uh, but it could just be that you know parents are good believers but still the child is a special child so what do you do in that situation we just do what we know to do which is to show the love of god to take care of that child to uh, be a blessing to that child right uh, if we just keep going back on how did this happen how did this happen what is the theological reason behind it you know it it might uh i don't know i mean it's uh, it's good to ask a question but it's not good to get caught up and let those things pull you down instead you what based on whatever we know we will uh, uh you know do our part to be a blessing to that child okay so that is one point that i just wanted to bring here when we ask this question like you know where is the sin who sin also be very aware that we should be solution minded so jesus does that he just says that it's not this man nor his parents but so that the works of god be revealed and one more thing he says he says while it is day then uh, i do the works of the father because night is coming and no one can work so what jesus is saying is see uh, even in his lifetime there was a limitation he knew that he cannot keep doing this you know displaying the glory of god in this way forever because they will put him under trial and he will have to go up on the cross so he was keen on you know how he said i have come here to finish the works of the father so he was keen on doing the works of god as long as there is an open window for uh, uh, a service even us you know today we might just take things very lightly and say ah we can preach the gospel we can do all these things no problem but you know we should be grateful for those moments and when you have the opportunity be passionate and keep doing it 
not that the opportunity will go but you know we can't say what if uh we go through some tough times where they say okay don't preach the gospel or you know we have opposition we don't know but in the case of jesus he clearly knew that this is the open window and i must serve god so when there is an opportunity to serve god we should take it up we should not delay we should uh, uh you know be grateful wow i can do this let me do it so he says let me continue to do the works of god and jesus knew that through him this blind man is going to be healed so he continues so as he was telling all these things and the disciples are talking with jesus here is what jesus does he spits on the ground and he made some clay right with what with spit and he took it and he put it on the man's eyes blind man his eyes then he tells him you go and wash in the pool of siloam so he went and washed and came back seeing okay now i let me just keep this question also before you what exactly was going on jesus took a spit in the clay and put it on the blind man's eyes what do you feel about this I don't know about you but when I heard it I I didn't like it that much. <laughs> so it is a very unusual way of uh working a miracle. Okay this man it is it, it is uh you know it it is a miraculous thing right somebody who's born blind uh to be able to see and uh, how does he do the healing? you know we we've seen that he uh, told the paralyzed man you get up take up your bed you walk um uh, you know jesus does things like that lay hands command he told that uh, man who noble man whose son was sick okay i spoke just now you go your son will be fine so there are different ways in which each healing takes place this particular healing uh what is this weird method so even today right it's not a formula now uh, sometimes we will tell the people okay brother you pray on that glass of water and you drink it you know you will be fine or we will take some oil we'll pray over the oil because you know james 5 talks about it we'll put it on their head and we rebuke the sickness in the name of jesus right we pray a prayer of faith that person is healed now every time we cannot use like a formula we have to go how the holy spirit is leading so here uh, jesus has done something very different take the spit mix with clay put it on the person's eyes so being led by the holy spirit is what is important okay now why is it that you know we don't complain about this method that jesus used because what happens is uh when he okay uh, therefore the neighbors and those who previously had seen that he was blind said is not this he who sat and begged so once this person comes back seeing okay actually i missed that was it's end of verse 7 he says so he went and washed and came back seeing you know whatever method we use how can it be justified provided the uh uh work of god is done provided the miracle is done so in this case though jesus is using such a different method we see at the end of verse 7 that he came back seeing so as long as you know uh that miracle takes place okay 
there might be a a different way in which the holy spirit is asking you to minister in the case of peter we saw peter's shadow falling on people that was healing the people but people were getting healed so that's why uh, there was no uh, uh, doubt that peter is trying to make it up no because you can see the result similarly you have paul his handkerchiefs and you know cloth which had touched his body that is bringing about healing for people so people were delivered to what extent you know they were bringing other people uh, from uh, you know close by places for healing because it was working again in jesus case it's very weird what he did but how did it get justified when jesus did that the man went washed his eyes he came back seeing okay so we know that god only led him to do something like that so it's not in the method we have to depend on the holy spirit but again it could be a very different way in which god asks us to minister to somebody but when the work of god is done you know it is uh, very very powerful so i remember uh, once uh, i think some of you all are aware that you know my uh, my mother was uh, very ill uh and uh, you know she was diagnosed with the final stage of cancer so she was going through a very hard time um and one of those periods uh, her uh, oxygen saturation level went down very low so we prayed and all but we just didn't know what to do because the doctors had told us that you know it will uh, they had given us some time and then said okay whatever uh, 24 hours 48 hours slowly it will drop and we cannot do anything to help her to come out of this so you all just spend time with her like that they told us so that day we went we prayed we were with her because we thought okay if it is two days we'll just spend with her you know so we were just with her then uh after praying uh, one of us uh, i don't remember exactly who it was but uh, somebody family or friends they said okay how about we pray uh, there was a, only a small banana kept on the table so we said okay uh, we'll pray over that banana and we will give it to her and we will uh, pray that god will strengthen her body and her breathing you know her breathing capacity will get better so we prayed and we gave her that banana and you know it was so miraculous because till that time all the senior doctors they came they saw they had also put the machines you know they had connected all the machines to help her and they told us we have tried this for quite a few days now it is not working medicine is not working machines are not working nothing is working we cannot help it so you just make up your mind so we prayed for her we gave her that banana and it was really a miracle because even the pulmonologist the lung specialist she was with us and we were looking at the saturation levels you can read no on the monitor the saturation was so low it was half of normal what a normal human being should have and in front of our eyes in the next couple of hours it went back to normal <laughs> okay so it was weird because we have never done this before you know praying over a banana and giving it to uh, someone at least i have never done that but long story short without any intervention even the doctors after they saw that they said we have nothing to do with this improvement because we have done we didn't give a medicine we didn't change the machine nothing automatically it has gone up okay uh, so they themselves said that it's a miracle and to uh, kind of just close the story uh, they had told that my mother will live only for two days but you know she lived for two and a half years after that uh, and her breathing was kind of you know okay to sustain her for another two and a half years so uh, just sharing you know because you're talking about anointing and unusual ways in which god works so uh, you know it, it's like it's again not in the method also it's it's in how the holy spirit leads you and when you follow the holy spirit's leading uh, you see the result in this case we could have people could have blamed jesus and said how can you put spit on a man's eyes but if that has 
uh, made a man who is blind from birth to see okay jesus do whatever you want no problem <laughs> because there is a result and some people also say that you know how uh, in peter's uh, cloth there was a an anointing right and with that anointing healed the people uh, they touched the cloth and people were delivered demons left people so maybe in the saliva of jesus there was anointing i don't know possible i don't know uh, what is the technique we don't know and i don't think i have seen anybody do this mix uh, uh, you know something with saliva and put it so unless we are led by the holy spirit uh, you know it it's very uh, weird to do something like this so now you see the best judges of a miracle like this is the family and the neighbors so the neighbors are looking at this man who is healed and they are saying uh, isn't he is isn't he uh, that same guy who sat and he begged because he was blind or uh, um, you know others are saying how is it possible for a blind man to see it must be somebody who looks like him you know just check maybe there are twins or there are people who look similar in the city so they are getting confused because again you know like we saw in uh, uh, the book of acts right peter and john he lame man who was born lame from birth and again we saw paul when he did that um, they treated him and uh, barnabas like gods okay in the city of lystra because from birth these people cannot walk same situation from birth this man cannot see and uh, when he is able to see people are astonished and they are trying to make sense of it some are saying that uh, he is not that guy some are saying he is a look alike but that man is claiming okay maybe he had his aadhar card so he is proving he is saying hey wait 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 it's me only you know look at my face look at my fingerprint look at everything it's me i am he then uh they question him how are your eyes open if it is you how is this possible so then you know he tells about uh, jesus he says look a man called jesus uh, he did this he put some clay anointed my eyes and he doesn't i think he doesn't know <laughs> that he it was a spit or so at least he doesn't mention it so he says he anointed he told me to go to the pool of siloam and do wash it i did it and you know i received my sight so uh it seems like he did not know much about jesus and maybe i am it's just my assumption maybe he did not have faith also i don't know because it's he is telling a man called jesus did this so but it was the work of the father which jesus wanted to perform and jesus tells him to do this he gets healed now start the questions of these jews and pharisees you know they always end up asking the wrong questions so they said to him where is he okay so why because they want to catch him about this matter as well and finally this man says i don't know okay so let's do this we will pause at this point because it's uh, 10:49 um you don't have to come back at 11 o'clock okay we'll just close and we will pray yeah uh yeah one of us could you please pray and we'll we'll end the call arin okay yeah pray for me yeah sure sure yeah thank you uh thank you lord for for blessing this uh, day lord father whatever we have learned the truth uh from your word lord father help us all to apply this in our daily walk with you and lord father let us be the doer of the work uh, and lord father help us all to trust in you alone so lord father in uh father i pray that lord father help us and let us not lean in our own understanding or in the worldly stuff but lord father help us all to fix our eyes in you alone so lord father Bless everyone, and I submit this whole session, uh, the remaining session, into your loving hand. Amen. Yeah, amen. Thank you, thank you, Arun. Uh, we'll stop here. Uh, you can go on to your next class, and we'll connect uh, in the next session and continue. Okay. So thank you, class. Thank you. God bless you. Bye. Thank you, ma'am.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Take care.